Hi guys, it's me Anne and I come to you today with a very important topic. Have you ever looked at a plant that you've bought recently and realized that maybe the soil that it is growing in can possibly kill it? Most local nurseries in India pot plants in the wrong kind of soil. Now if you go to a nursery and look around, you will find very few plants potted in loamy soil which is ideal for plants to grow in and most plants love loamy soil. What is loamy soil? Loamy soil is simply a mix of equal parts of sand, silt and clay. If you want to exactly understand and know what loamy soil is, you can go and watch my video on soil sciences. I will leave the link down below in the description box. Now you will observe this when you go to your nursery that most plants are planted in full clay soil or either in full cocoa peat. I have also noticed this that some plants are planted in moisture retaining mixes and actually those plants prefer a drier mix because they are not moisture loving plants. And if you buy plants in this condition, in these mixes, they may not survive under your care because by buying them like this, you are reducing your margin of error tremendously. You may ask me why do nurseries do this? It probably is lack of knowledge sometimes, sometimes it's cost cutting because it's a profit based industry or sometimes it's just plain convenience. However, please don't misunderstand me, I am not spreading hate for our local nurseries. We need them and we love them and they get such beautiful plants for us. I would also like to tell you one more thing that I am not trying to frighten you all or tell you all that if you will buy plants from nurseries that they will die a 100% in under your care. Because everyone has different factors and different conditions surrounding their plant. The point that I am trying to make here is that even if it doesn't kill your plant, it may harm your plant in the long run. So first, let's talk about clay soil. Now, clay soil is beautiful, nutrient-rich, good soil. But when a plant is planted in full clay soil, there are many problems that can arise. So we'll just quickly go through that and discuss that. Clay soil works for some plants, but it doesn't mean that it is good for that plant. Now my curry leaf plant is potted in clay soil for the longest time and it is not complaining. But sometimes clay soil does more bad to certain plants than it does good to them. Now let's talk about how a full clay soil mix affects your plant. The first point is suffocation of roots. Clay soil has very fine particles that stick around and it compacts roots. Now this is bad for plants, most plants because all plants need air flow around their roots but it is more bad for the plants that need more airflow around the roots. So it will affect those plants even worse. The second point is drainage. Compaction of clay soil doesn't allow the water to flow down easily. You may notice when you're watering a full clay soil mix pot, it takes time sometimes for the water to get absorbed. It all uh, floats on the top layer and then after some time it just gets soaked in. So that is the problem of full clay soil mixes. The third point is soil hardening. You must have also observed that when clay soil, full clay soil mixes again harden, they harden and become rock-like. Just imagine a plant that has a tender root system in this hard rock-like mix. I'm sure they will suffer. The third point is its ability to hold salts. Clay soil has a high cation exchange capacity. I'll quickly tell you what that is. It is the capacity of a soil to hold exchangeable cations, including nutrients and salts. So this means that clay has the ability to hold nutrients well, which is very good for your soil, but at the same time, it also holds salts well. And eventually there's a faster buildup of salts in your full clay soil. That could be bad for your plant. The second potting medium that we will be talking about is cocoa peat. Cocoa peat is good to add in your soil mixes, but can it work alone? I've seen many plants planted in full cocoa peat. For example, the ficus microcarpa ginseng is mostly planted in full cocoa peat and actually they prefer a more loamy soil. Even this ZZ raven is planted in full cocoa peat or cocoa chips. There's absolutely no other soil medium in it. There is no compost, there is no sand, there is no clay soil, absolutely nothing. It's full cocoa peat. Now let's talk about how a full cocoa peat soil mix may affect your plant. 
the first point is porosity because it's very porous this medium will find it difficult to support a plant especially plants that are heavy so heavier plants and uh, huger plants will need a firmer soil mix the second point is natural salts coco peat comes with natural salts which may be bad for your plant washing coco peat reduces the salts in it the bricks of coco peat that we buy if not treated properly may have a high salinity level and if the salinity level goes beyond a threshold it will not be good for your plants if you buy a plant that has been potted in 100% coco peat and you aren't sure there's no way to know if it's good quality coco peat or not if the salinity levels in it are low or high and your plant is not doing so well that could be the reason that your plant is not surviving the third point is water retention coco peat absorbs water well and also retains moisture very well if you look at plants that have full coco peat the top layer of the soil that is the medium will dry but then when you go quite deep down the there is a lot of moisture down there the moisture really doesn't dry up completely so it's not evenly dried out and you may end up overwatering your plants so that is a thing that you need to look out for especially when there is a full coco peat mix you have to cut back even more on your watering there are many plants like succulents and cacti in nurseries that are planted directly into coco peat or moisture retaining mixes they do add a few other mediums but there's a lot of coco peat in there to retain moisture and you will always see that it's wet and moist the soil remains wet and moist for a, for the longest time now this can be terrible for your plant if you're living in a place like mumbai because the humidity levels here are so high especially during the rains that can actually kill your plant so it's very important that you know which plant needs drier soil mixes and which plants need uh, moisture retaining mixes uh, plants that love moisture and humidity will do really well in such mixes now to conclude this i will tell you with a high porosity level with a high water holding capacity and a high cation exchange capacity this medium should be used in limit because together with all these qualities it cannot be used as a sole potting medium it must be mixed in smaller quantities into your soil mixes i also want to touch upon another aspect the third point is pests now many a times when we go to nurseries and we try to buy our plants we do not look for pests like we should be looking for them sometimes a plant is already infected and by the time we get it home it's too late you keep it along with your other plants and the pest just spread and there's an infestation and not just one plant but many plants end up dying out so when you are at the nursery be absolutely observant and take your time with each plant check under the leaves check the stems check the surface of the soil if there's any fungus if there are any small tiny pests running about sometimes the pests go and burrow deep down so what you can do is you can just use your finger to dig up the soil to disturb the soil as much as you can without damaging the roots definitely but then you will see if any pests are burrowed deep down they will all start coming out you try to go as deep as you can without damaging the roots The other thing that you can do is try to gently loosen the soil up a bit, pull the plant out, and uh, check the roots of the plant if possible. This is difficult to do, especially because in our nurseries, it's mostly planted in clay soil, and it's very tough to pull out of the plant. If it was loamy soil, you could have easily pulled it out and checked the roots out. But in our country, that is a little difficult and challenging. But you can do your best to check for pests before you get the plants. How do we find a solution to these problems clay soil coco peat and wrong soil mixes what i'll tell you what i do personally when i get my plant home even if they are in the wrong mix and they are doing okay for some time i let them adjust to their new surroundings because shifting a plant from point a to point b gives the plant a little bit of stress so that you have to keep in mind and don't just get your plant home and first thing uh, repot it just wait for some time let your plant adjust to its new surroundings when you see that the plant is looking a little happy and settled and it's starting to look like it's getting there that might take maybe 2 3 weeks or maybe more than a month 
you have to observe your plant and see that when it's doing pretty okay that is when you can change your soil if need be do not just change your soil just because you have to if your plant is doing okay and it's blooming it's growing it's throwing out new leaves that means it's happy where it is do not disturb it unless and until it is root bound so wait for the plant to get completely root bound if it's doing well just leave it alone don't go repotting and removing the soil and all that for example as you can see in the screen right back there i have my stromanthi triostar it is planted in full clay soil but i haven't changed that as of now because it's doing pretty okay it's not showing any signs of complaint it's happy where it is ideally in ideal conditions it would prefer loamy soil but i'm waiting till the time it starts showing me signs of being root bound or till the time it starts showing me signs of distress before repotting the plant because it's doing very well it's thriving it's giving out new leaves and it's spreading out you've seen it in the backdrop of so many of my videos that's just an example of what i said before but there are times when the plant is not really doing well and if it's in full coco peat suddenly you see the shoots becoming yellow or something something's happening where the plant is looking ill then i would suggest that you try to put it in a loamy soil mix but do is do it as gently as you can not immediately again i would say give it some time to adjust to its new surroundings and then repot your plant putting plants in loamy soil mixes is the best thing that you can do for them because loamy soil is ideal it allows air flow near the roots it provides nutrients for your plants and it is absolutely perfect for your plant to thrive and grow so i really hope that you enjoyed this video and it helped you in some way do tell us what you think about this video in the comment section down below i will be making many such videos in the series soil stories i already have a few of them i will leave the links down below in the description box for you if you want a specific uh, topic do let us know down in the comments if you've liked our video please remember to give us a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet i would say please subscribe to our channel for such lovely green adventures and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications for each and every video that we put up so i'll see you soon till then stay green